magic of the sunstone, you're tuned into the Jewel Riders Archive. Hey Jewel fans, I'm Chris. And I'm Ronnie from the Jewel Riders Archive. We're here today with a very special guest from our sister site, the Avalon Archive. We want to introduce you to the fabulous lady who runs it, Jacksworth. Hello, uh, I'm Jacksworth. You can call me Jack. I run the Avalon Archive, which is, I'm pretty sure, the only fan site that's dedicated to Avalon Web of Magic. Yeah. So tell us a little bit first about how you started the Avalon Archive and what what drew you to Avalon Web of Magic as a book series? Well, let's start at the very beginning. I was Okay, a very uh, good place to start. Yes. Um, long time ago, I was a Jewel Writers fan. Um, watched Excellent. the show. Um, and then much later, I uh, stumbled upon Stormy's website, um, ordered the tapes, and on her website, there was a link to something called Avalon Web of Magic. There's a little... Thing next to it said it's not jewel writers but it's cool and i'm like okay i'm in <laughs> <laughs> sounds very stormy like yeah. <laughs> so um you know check checked out the website um and there were links to um songs that were in the books and clicked on them it's like wait a minute i've heard these before these were on jewel writers okay now i have definitely have to get the books and that kind of started everything but didn't start the website until a few years later when they came when they re-released the books, and I, mean, I picked was up the first. Like around 2008 or nine or so. I, I want to say 2008 or nine. Like I think they were had already been out. The re-releases had already been out for a couple of years, but I was in college at the time. So. Yeah, as, as was I. I remember buying them at Borders, which is sadly now closed. Yeah. So it had <laughs> been before 2011. Yeah. So I remember going to Borders, um, I found the books in the children's section with some spiffy new cover art, and I'm like, okay, what are these doing here? And I take the first book out, I read the first page, and it's not the same as my original copy that I had back home. So I'm like, okay, they changed it. And I rebought all the books and cataloged every single change and decided, okay, this has to go up online somewhere. So now, I just have to stop you there because yeah. that already sounds like a huge undertaking. Like, <laughs> and, and I also am just curious now, I, I think everyone, um, you know, needs to understand that while Chris and Jacksworth, you know, you guys were obviously fans of the book series. This is actually my first time reading it. So I have never read the Avalon Web of Magic book series before, and I am unfortunately notorious for not reading things. So whether it's so jewel writers or other things, I just don't have the time. I mean, but then again, my passion is video editing and creation. So you'll see a lot of my artwork, you know, all over the site. But when it comes to like reading things like the style guide, or not the style guide, but like the show Bible, like those things just haven't happened yet. So You're almost five years in, you have not read it. I still haven't read Bible. it. Um, but you know what the thing is, is that I, I can at least say that as a Jewel Rider fan, yeah, it wasn't exactly as Stormy put it. It wasn't quite Jewel Riders, but it still had the essence of it. And so for a fan like myself, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So Jacksworth, you know, as far as like the publication goes, you said that there was some changes that were made. Like, yeah. was it significant? Is it like, am I not getting the purest form when I'm reading this omnibus? I don't know. Like, what am I missing? The one you, you showed in that video you have is a, uh, what is it, the re-release omnibus, which yes, I'm pretty sure is, it's about the same as the uh, recent ebook edition. So you're not missing anything. Okay, um, good. I don't feel cheated then. Okay, no, like the only thing, you, like um, the only serious changes are in between like the original Scholastic uh, release, which was from like what, 2001, and the re-release, which was from like, I want to say 2007. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and those I think are... an important note to make here is that the original release of the books from Scholastic, it's a 12 book series altogether. Yeah. They only released, I believe, through book nine? Ten. They released ten. book ten. Okay. Yeah. And the series was not truly finished until the re-release. Yeah. 
-hmm. So Ronnie, for you, I think you're reading what is really the only complete version. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, yeah. uh, like I said, I'm I'm good and glad. Then it's just I want to make sure because I was like, well, wait a minute. Like, what were these edits? Like, was it significant? Like, did I miss an entire like you know aspect of the story or something like that? But now. Jacksworth, you archived then all of those changes. I mean, mm -hmm. so they were significant enough, at least from a fan's perspective. Like, was it just changes in the wording or was there any plot changes or like what? Help me understand. Okay, so for some books, like the very first book, like the version you're reading, that entire first two pages aren't in the original Scholastic Edition. So, oh. yeah. So. Okay. So you're dealing with either scenes that are completely cut out. Uh, the first book has some additional character stuff that wasn't in the original edition. Um, let me think. In some of the later books, they start um, like, like you only read the uh, first book, right? Yeah, I've okay. only read Circles in the Stream. Okay, all right. So you don't see any really major changes until like, the back half of the series when it starts doing more jewel questy sort of stuff. So nothing to worry about right now. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, I mean, I, and it might have been the addition of those pages that helped me fall in love even more with the characters, but like immediately I had already fallen in love with Emily. I mean, uh, she is like the Tamara -like character, so I mean already hashtag Tamara forever. But, you know, it, it, it was such a fun character creation process like reading it like the way that they started to um shape the characters so i really fell in love with emily and adrian as well it i don't know it do, do anyone pronounce it adrian is it adrian like how do you say that i've always said it adrian Same. adrian yeah okay just want to make sure i mean it, i guess it, anyone could say a different way you know there's, <laughs> there's a, a um, audiobook version of the first book floating around somewhere but i've never oh. listened I've never listened to it, but hey. You know, so that was that released? Was that released by Scholastic? Yeah, that was released by Scholastic. So it follows the um, original version okay. of the story. Well, that might now be something fun that we could track down. I'm reading yeah. it on the Kindle version this time around. Do mm -hmm. you know? Are there any changes to that version? Um, there, there's some changes that are like either word changes or uh, like pop culture, culture references. That okay. And that was what I loved. I loved the pop culture references. Like there was some fun, like Alice in Wonderland, and there were some other like child cartoon references that when I read it, I was like, oh, like that's so fun. Like I, you know, the child in me immediately can recognize that. Mm -hmm. um, but then they did have other things like she was on, I think her iPod or she went to a website or she was on her, you know, computer, but it was never updated to say like, oh, she was on her smartphone or anything like that. So a part of me was wondering, it's like, I wonder, you know, in the future when a child is reading this, like, will they actually know what an iPod <laughs> is? Or will they know, you know, what those things are? Because they're yeah. not used anymore. You know? I want right. to say in the original version, she does a lot of basically like a clone of AOL Instant Messenger. Yeah, they, they do a lot of Instant Messenger in the original edition. And I guess that's Which makes me just crack there. up now because... <laughs> Was that in the first book? Uh, I not... think it's later books. They... Oh, yeah. okay. Because yeah. I was like, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for the people who are also not really aware of the series, I think that we gave a good kind of explanation of how long the book series is. But do we kind of have, I know that we've been trying to track down, you know, more people who are part of the creative process. But, I mean, Jacksworth, with all of your research, like, do we kind of know – Anything about like the creation process of where it came from, why it came, or anything like that? Um, good question. There's not much about that. Um, I remember interviewing Rachel Roberts. I want to say, oh man, almost ten. Uh, yeah, almost ten years ago. And I remember asking her questions like, "Did she know if it was related to Jewel Riders?" And I didn't really get much out of her about it, unfortunately. Was so. this through email? Yeah, yeah, this was an email interview. Okay, yeah. okay. How did you track down the contact info? Um, this was when the ebooks were re-released by another publishing company. I think it was like Premier Digital Publishing, and some other little website managed to get a hold of her for an interview. So I just asked them like, "Hey, how did you get a hold of her?" And they just told oh, me, "Oh wow, okay." Yeah, so like contact the publisher, and then. 
the um, I sent them questions and waited over a month and finally got answers back. <laughs> <laughs> so now do you have a link to that archived original interview and then also the interview questions that you asked? I think both of them should be on the website. If you uh, go on my website and type in um, interview Rachel Roberts, it should pop up. <laughs> All right, well, we'll have to link that then. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then that's kind of the why it was created. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, people who love jewel writers found it. I mean, I, again, maybe I'm just out of the loop, but it wasn't until Chris actually told me about this series that I even found out about it. Like, I, I wonder how Stormy found out. Like, did she ever tell you, like, oh, I saw the books or I just started reading? Like, how how did one just happen upon it and be like, oh, my gosh, it's, like, you know, based on jewel writers? I wouldn't know, honestly. Like, at the time the books came out, I was in high school. I wasn't paying attention to children's books at all, so just Stormy don't... reads. Uh, yeah. Stormy reads really widely. Ah. I know. So I'm. I have. I wonder if she just stumbled across it. That's definitely a, a question to follow up with her on for we'll sure. I have to ask her. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Chris, I'll let you take it from here. I know yeah. you had some questions. Mm -hmm. So I. I just wanted to see if if Jocksworth could give us a quick overview, basically, of the series, the setup for the series. Okay. And, and the story that it tells. All right. So the basic story is three very different girls uh, stumble upon a uh, magical glade in the forest where they find uh, magic rocks and... Um, magical animals that they are able to talk to, and a portal to another world that is being destroyed by an evil sorceress who is essentially experimenting on animals so she could collect magic to find some place called Avalon. And they gotta stop her. <laughs> and then it gets and then it gets more complicated. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's They're... ready for book two? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it, the three girls match very nicely to the three main girls in Jewel Riders. Mm -hmm. So Emily, we, as we've already said, matches up to Tamra. And it's very evident with her healing magic and her connection with animals and all of that. And Adrian, I might point out that her owl friend is named Ariel. Yes. I, just, <laughs> I smiled at that. As anyone knows, Ariel is my favorite mermaid. So there you go. <laughs> Um, Adrian is the is a young Native American girl who lives in a in a place called the Ravenswood Preserve. Ravenswood being another Jewel Riders reference, and this preserve is where they find the portal that leads them to the magical world of Aldenmore. And the third girl, whose name is Kara, is the daughter of the town mayor. You know, so she's basically, you know, the modern equivalent of a princess, princess. in a small town. She's is it Kara or is it Kara? I, I always don't say, know. I, I, I always say Kara. I, I always say I Kara, Kara too. Oh, well, <laughs> apparently you both were in sync and I'm just totally <laughs> opposite from you guys with my Adrienne and Kara. <laughs> or Kara, I, I mean. I always read it as, Car as a Kara because that's the name of Superman's um, cousin Supergirl. Is and it? she's another blonde... Oh, okay. With magic equivalent powers. Maybe they were influenced. <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, Kara is the obvious, you know, analogy to Guinevere. And I have to say, over the course of the series, I think she becomes my favorite character. Yeah, she does get a whole lot better as the series goes on. I hated her um, at first, especially in the original publication. But oh, they... Really? Uh, yes. But they uh, changed a lot of things with her with in the um, new version, and uh, she gets better as it goes along. She grows okay. up. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, now I have to ask, why did you dislike her in the beginning? Like, what was it about the character? Um, I Honestly, she kind of came across as a uh, spoiled... Uh, I mean, I need to think of a nice, clean word for this. <laughs> <laughs> Who said we had to be clean? <laughs> children listening to this. <laughs> this is an all-ages podcast. 
Okay, so it's more or less just her personality. Yeah. Now, what about the Guinevere character then in Jewel Riders? How did you feel about her as far as like ranking of your favorites? I, I actually, as a kid, she was my favorite. <laughs> okay, so Guinevere was your favorite. And then how about in the book series, The Avalon Web of Magic, who did you most identify with? Um, I was more of an Adrian fan. Okay. okay. That's interesting. We've all got our, our favorite. That's great. Well, Chris, you were always more partial to Fallon anyway. Did you feel that you were also more partial to Adrian? I do, I do especially okay. as the series goes on. Okay. And as I mentioned, I already like Emily, but we'll wait and see how that goes because I'm only on book one, so yeah. I don't know how it'll go. But, uh, you know, similarly for me, Jacksworth, Kara, Kara, um, she... I don't know. It's just like I didn't really like her, especially when they are trying, you know, to bust out. Um, I forgot the magical Fel. bear thing. Fell. Fel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, felonious, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I remember that because of Shrek. <laughs> That's how I remember <laughs> that. But um, when they're trying to break him out, and she's like on her phone, and she answers the phone, and then she's like complaining, and just it was all sorts of like whiny attitude, and I just yeah. I really dislike her, and and something else that I hated was the fact that she's wearing sandals. It's like who wears sandals when you're out adventuring? Like why would you do that? <laughs> Why are you so, wearing them to the preserve? It's, no. Exactly. It's just totally inappropriate. <laughs> um, although I will say, I mean, I like her outfit on the cover of the book, but the book art, and now this is also a question too. Do you feel that the art appropriately conveys the same theme or the same like feelings? I'm, I'm going to direct this to you, to you, Jacksworth. Um, do you feel that the artwork kind of conveyed the same character expression that you were thinking and envisioning when you read the story? Actually, yes. Um, at the time, like, I really hated the original uh, covers because it's, like, weird, like, badly photo-montaged stuff. And then these new covers come along where it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's dark and but full of, like, anticipation and wonder at the same time. It's, like, yes, this is what this is what I thought the series was all about. Like, it's, I don't know, dangerous but, like, magical at the same time. So I think you're totally right on that sense of wonder. They're very magical illustrations. Uh, the, the illustrator's name is Alison Strom, for those unfamiliar with her work. Uh, she's a she's a great illustrator, and I think pretty much every chapter has some illustration. Yeah. It does. Yeah, there are. And I, you know, we've talked about world building before. Now, in the Omnibus, there is a picture of, like, the map that you can look at when you're looking at, like, the sanctuary. And then there's also the other map of the other world. Is that Was that in the original... Um, edition? Uh, no. In fact, you don't even get a map of anything until uh, Heart of Avalon, which is the last book they published. Oh my goodness. Oh, really? oh. <laughs> you finally get a map of Aldemore. Uh, there was a map of Ravenswood that they had on the website, and that's it. That's okay. all you got. Well, then I guess I'm just blessed because that was the, <laughs> the first thing I turned the page. I opened it up, and aside from, you know, the book pages and the intro page, the next thing was two maps. So, like, I studied those first before I even started reading the story, and I was looking at the placement of, like, the glade or the portal field, which looks a lot like wild magic. Um, and, you know, like, I was looking at all the places, like the house and the Wolf Run Pass and Ravenswood Manor and Mist Trail, and it, it all evoked Joel Rider memories to me. And then when I looked at the map of Aldenmore and I was like seeing the frozen tundra and the fairy glade and the fire desert, again, everything seemed very Jewel Riders to me, but I was starting to picture it so that when I was reading the story, I was able to kind of place where everything was happening. And, and that's the way that I read stories. I mean, in my head, there's like sound effects, there's music, there's character voices. Like I'm basically a Disney read along when you listen to what I'm reading. <laughs> but you know, that's what I need a picture. So as you know, as a, a reader of children's books, that's what I love. That's why I love illustrations because it helps me to picture everything. So what I was gonna say was, you know, I definitely loved the illustrations and they helped me. And I think that looking back on them, they kind of did. Um, show like the characters or the way that I kind of was imagining it. Um, although I think that it's it's a little bit more, at least on the omnibus, like it's a little bit more like anime looking than 
what I'm like typically used to, but it still helped to tell the story in the same way that I was envisioning it. Yeah, there's definitely an anime influence to the new illustrations. And I, I partially wonder if that's because the uh, the the editions of the books that you're reading were published by a company called Seven Seas, mm-hmm. which yeah. is a big publisher of manga. And I was going to say, do they publish manga as well? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, the covers are very anime-inspired. But, you know what, that could also be the target audience. Because, I mean, you know, the same people that love anime and things like that also love Magical Girls series. Right. Mm-hmm. And speaking of Magical Girl series, we have had rumors for a very long time that there will at some point be an Avalon Web of Magic TV series. I Hashtag hope. sore subject. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, unfortunately, I haven't heard anything about it since September. Uh, that was when they posted new concept art. Like they finally posted new pictures of all the girls and Ravenswood. And there's a little poster. I was like, yay. I, and I posted it on my website. And a week later, um, Voyager.world, you pronounced the dot? I don't know. Uh, but that was Robert Mandel's production company. His Instagram is now gone. Oh, that's no so way upsetting. contacting him. And uh, the production sites also took down all of the concept art. So now there's just like a poster image and a little coming soon message. And that's it. I have heard absolutely nothing about it. And Did you save all that images before I, they took them down? I've saved all the images, but I didn't. I've only saved links to comments that um, that Robert Randell made about the production of the series. But there's, I have, a, there's no way to like use Wayback Machine to get an archive any of that because it's just gone. That's it's, really sad. Yeah. You know, though, I mean. I think that a lot of people are asking about, you know, the production of the series that was promised and things like that. And I think the thing to basically come out and say is, you know, while a lot of people see us as the fandom keepers, you know, we're obviously not, you know, in any way responsible for the production of that. We're just basically, you know, bringing the news to you. So I know that I, I don't know, at least from your perspective, but I know that we get asked a lot, whether it comes to Avalon Web of Magic or Jewel Riders, you know, people are constantly asking us, like, well, well when are you going to do this? When is a reboot? When is, you know, like this? And, and it's just explaining to people, you know, while we present all the products and while we do all that, you know, we ourselves are not really influenced with the production. So let me ask you then at least something that you can be you know, kind of responsible for as far as, like, the engagement and sharing it with people. I mean, I can assume that the people that were following you were really excited to hear about this, but what was kind of the general consensus? Like, were people excited for a remake? Were they kind of like, well, they better do it a certain way? Or, like, what was the general consensus? Um, It seemed like people were really excited about it, or at least the English fans were. Um, I remember some French fans, um, They like, when they saw the production art, they're like, no! This isn't Jewel Riders. <laughs> oh, oh yes. yeah. <laughs> well, explain that. I mean, is it just because more French people like Jewel Riders, or are they not fans of Web of Magic, or what? I, I think what, what this exactly? happened. I think this was before the French edition of the Avalon books came out, so I don't think they were aware of the books at the time. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the French edition of the books came out. I want to say two years ago when they started publishing them and they oh only, really yeah and they only published the first six okay oh, so now exciting. actually that's a good <laughs> historic question then so we were saying and remind me when did the first publications around when did these come out of uh, the books the original the scholastic books? yeah oh uh, i want to say 2000 2001 there okay, about. so uh, right around the beginning of the new century. So we have the first publication, but not all of them. You said up until like book 10 by Scholastic. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then after that, did it lay dormant? Then did it go to a new publisher? What happened after that? Um, Kind of lay dormant for a while. I didn't know about new publication until I think 2006. So uh, between 2002 and 2006. No, 2004 and 2006. It was like a lull, I guess. According to Amazon, the original edition of Circles in the Stream was published August 1st, 2001. Okay. Okay, so August. So close to September. I know. <laughs> okay, so then it was republished. Um, what was the publishing house that it went to after Scholastic? Um, 
So let's see. So Scholastic released the first six books. CDS Publishing then re-released the first six books and then the last half of the series of book 10. And then Seven Seas got it and published all 12 books. So the 12 books, the, the last two, were not published until when? Um, oh, my God. Uh, 2009? <laughs> so basically fans had to wait like nine years. Even though these books, were they already like completed? It's just that the other publishers just never published them? Or do we I, know? I, I don't know. I think they might have been already finished. And I think they were edited again for... The yeah, re-release, but there's no way to know what was changed because they were right, published. Right. I see. You know, and it's just it's so sad because since we're talking about you know the production of the series, it just feels like Web of Magic. Anyone who loves the series just has to have a really tough skin because it's like every time you're promised mm -hmm. something, you just have to assume that you're going to be let down, basically. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, oh, well, there's a, I'll, I, oh, I'll believe it when it actually happens. Like, yep. you know, I won't believe it till I have it in my hand. Um, and then, you know, it's like here we are, you know, 20 years later, and then they're talking about a remake or about a series and things like that. And it's just like, as far as fandoms go, I mean... I know jewel writers, and when we talk about jewel writers, there's people who constantly, oh, I thought I dreamt of it. I didn't <laughs> know it really existed, and all this and that. I mean, do people, like, do they remember Avalon Web of Magic, or do you have people kind of, like, you know, oh, I thought I read something like this as a child, but I didn't really remember what it was? Or do they just, when they read it, they were, remain fans? Um. Honestly, like, I don't know very many people who actually read it, and those who did either were became, like, really big fans, or they read it, and then years later, like, oh, yeah, sorry, that was a thing I read. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. And did they say if most of them, did they find it through just, like, loving the Magical Girl books, or was it, like, you know, someone went out and, like, oh, my gosh, this is a Jewel Rider sequel or remake or whatever? Um, a lot of them had actually didn't know about Jewel Riders until after they read the books. Okay. So, yeah. So a lot of the fans, it sounds like, who came to Avalon Web of Magic were not necessarily Jewel Riders fans. And I just find that so funny because these series have such crossover, and yet I think the fandoms of each didn't know. Ba barely seem to know yeah. about. <laughs> Well, I blame the marketing team. That's who I blame. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I never knew of these. So, yeah. And I have to say, like, as a high school boy, I would never have picked up those original covers. Same, same here. In high school, it's like, ah, oh, do I want to go in the kids section? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, the, the original covers are a little cringy. Yeah, a little. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go, the marketing team. They should have done some product testing. Like, oh, do you like this cover? And then people should have said no, and then they would have changed it. Although, despite how, what I think of them, I still wish I had my copies of them. I still have mine packed up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> now, were these always in soft cover, or did yeah, they, they release them in hard covers? Um... If you look on Goodreads, I think for some of the original editions, they mention, like, library um, editions of the books. Oh, okay, so, like, a board binding, basically. Yeah. Okay. But, so there's never been, like, a deluxe hardcover no. edition or anything no, like that? No, sadly. I wish. Too bad. I, I would buy that in two seconds. Same here. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more, because I know that we want to discuss the book itself. So for me, being, you know, that this is my first intro to Avalon Web of Magic and falling in love with the characters and reading the story, um, I know that I immediately, like how I said, I, you know, fell in love with Emily, but then there's a lot of questions that are remaining to be, I don't know if they're ever going to be answered or maybe they will, maybe they won't. I mean, obviously we don't want to give anything away, especially for those who are listening, who are just starting the book series. But I know for me, like, I'm wondering, okay, who's that big cat? Like, she saved the cat, and is she going to be bonded to the cat? Are, are we never going to see the cat again? Like, oh, she'll, she and, comes back next book. She's okay. 
Okay, and then it's like it has wings, I think. So we'll wait and see what that is. And then the whole thing with like um, when Kara, I guess, just kind of has magical powers inside of her. Like she never actually got a jewel. I don't know. Like, will she ever find the jewel? Oh, no, like, wait till next book. Okay, <laughs> but it's like these so are just many all questions, questions will be answered in one well, and, book. Well, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying is that like you know from a first time reader perspective, these are all the questions I'm asking, and it's like um, the other thing was Ozzy, and and as I mentioned in the video, you know, calling people to read the books, I was a little anti Ozzy at the beginning, like I'm just like, oh, he's gonna be this stupid side character, and you're not gonna like him, and I mean he he's a little annoying at times, but I find that I do enjoy him. Like, he's he's fun. I don't know if that changes, but for right now, that's how I feel. And, um, like, I'm interested to know more about Adrian's grandma and how she's all mystical and, like, did you know, was she, was she a jewel writer or the equivalent of whatever it was when she was younger? Like, those are all questions that I have. I kind of wish it actually answered more stuff about Adrian's grandma, but you're not going to get too much more about it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it's, that's too bad. Yeah. It's just more like she's the mystical um, Native American. <laughs> yeah. That just seems like such a fun, like, she's almost like the Merlin character. Like, that's the way I saw her was, like, she's, like, this wise shaman who has some answers about the mystical things. Like, that's the way I see her. Um but at least, I, there, I don't know. There is I mean, a Merlin Yeah, there is a Merlin. Okay. Um, just as Ozzy is sort of the Archie equivalent for the series. The so you're seeing he and... Okay. So then they are connected, maybe. Not, um, not, this, not, the, not the same way. Oh, but. okay. I gotcha. Um, and then the other thing that I'm thinking about, like with um, Fel... And the other magical beings are there if they're walking in and out. And it's like, okay, at the end, in that scary beast that they defeat and, like, doesn't get the web, like, I'm like, okay, does that – the beast then got knocked into another portal. Is that correct? And then – I don't know. Again. We'll see him again. Okay. Okay. And the fire, what is it called? The black fire. The black mm-hmm. fire. Like, I'm trying to also – I guess it's just, for me – Reading this series as a Jewel Rider fan, I'm trying to equivalent everything to, like, a Jewel Rider character. So I'm like, is this kind of like, you know, the grim of the villainous, or was this just a random character? Again, it, like, I'm, you know. Yeah, it's just uh, the most powerful minion that our evil sorceress lady has. So. Okay. Yeah. So not quite a Dweezil. No, <laughs> there's kind of a dweezily character. Oh no! <laughs> I'll only accept them if they do drag throughout the series, uh, like how Rufus and Twig do. No, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I mean, I don't know. I am. I know that you guys have read it, you know, before, but I am interested to hear you guys' take on a summary of the story. Okay. You mean of the whole series? No, no, no. The story, the <laughs> oh, book. Oh, okay. No, sorry. Just the just the one book just circles okay. in the stream. Like, I mean, like, you know, Jacksworth, when you were reading it, like, you know, obviously you went to book two. So, like, what captivated you so much about it? What did you really like about it? That's, I guess that's what I want to find out. For me, like, I'm weird. I'm a completionist. I kind of have to finish a, a series as soon as I start it. So it's more like... Uh, Okay, I finished book one. Got to go on to the next one. But I also really did love all the characters. I kind of wanted wanted to see um, wanted to see more of the world. And like, especially if you have a portal to another world, what's on the other side? I wanted to see what was there. So. Mhm. Mhm. Chris, I don't know if you have anything to add. Yeah, I mean, for me, obviously, the original draw to the series was the Jewel Riders connection, and. Jacksworth and I actually explored that in a series of blog posts on the Avalon Archive in a few years before we started the Jewel Riders Archive. So, I mean, there was always a huge draw from that perspective. But I did find, especially... At, at first, I wasn't totally sold on the series. I was like, yeah, it's fun. It's cute. Um, but I wish it was more Jewel Riders. 
but at, as it went on, I began to really appreciate it for what it for what it is, which is you know a a really fun kind of modern era update to Jewel Riders that takes some of the fun elements, but really ends up making its own thing and its own story by the end. And I really grew to love the characters, even Ozzy, who I was totally not sold on the first time I read these books. I found him much more appealing this read-through, surprisingly. Um, and it's probably because I grew attached to him over the course of the of my original read-through of the 12 books. But it was... Uh, it's just a really fun series. I have to say, like, coming back to it was kind of... Um, kind of like coming home a little bit. I really liked it again. And I was glad to feel that it was still enjoyable. That's great. That's the testimony of a, you know, a good book, is that a you could testimony. still pick it up. And, <laughs> well, it's a test testament. I don't know, what's the appropriate <laughs> word? But, you know, that... That sounds like I'm proselytizing <laughs> at your door for. Well, that's what you do. You tell the good the word good about jewel riders. Yeah. Have you heard the good news about Guinevere? Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, th but that's what I'm saying is that you know that's basically what a good book is, is that you could pick it up and you can still enjoy it years later, and that you've enjoyed reading it you know, however many times where you find all those different changes and like, oh, they changed this. Like, I want to, you know, document this. Um, for the summary, is was it just a summary or what exactly did you guys do for the first book? I think we each, if I remember correctly, we each broke it down into kind of the cool tidbits that we liked from the books. I remember I made a list of basically jewel writers connections for each book. I, I actually kept a, my bookmark was like a pad of paper that I would write mm. down jewel writer connections on. Like references? Mm -hmm, as I read through it. And okay. I actually made a bunch of Kindle highlights in oh, this fantastic. read through. Yeah, so well, I mean, fun. and anyone that wants to know the, the marks that I did, you just have to watch our social media because I'll post them as stories every time that I read them or they make me laugh out loud or whatever it might be. <laughs> Well, we're going to definitely have to link all that stuff throughout, like, the um, the original read-throughs and, and the things that you said that were posted on Avalon Archive. Right. Yeah, we'll definitely put some links to that stuff. Um, how, how did you feel about the Jewel Riders connections? Did you wish there was more? Did you think it was just enough? Did you, think, did you wish it was a little less? That, and this is for both of you. Well, for the first one, I kind of wish there was a little bit more, but then this also kind of scratched a little itch I had with when I first watched Jewel Riders, which was I wanted to know how uh, Tamara and Fallon became Jewel Riders. You know, like, how did they get their jewels? And this, the first book oh. of Avalon kind of um, filled that void for me. I never thought about that, but you're totally right. Well, I didn't quite see it that way, but I did feel similarly where I felt like the first half of the book or two thirds or however much it is, was basically the Tamara and Fallon story with Emily and Adrian. So mm -hmm. I felt like I really liked the first book because of that. Um, I mean, not to say that I don't like, you know, Kara or Guinevere, but it's just like, I feel like the dynamic between those two friends is a little bit stronger because you always just assume like, you know, they've had this relationship, they've been friends for so long and, you know, they're both a little bit of the outcasts as well. And I think that any you know, child that especially is into magical girls often feels that way sometimes, like, you know, that that's who they identify with. So for me, I liked the story the way that it was. I think going into it as a Jewel Riders fan, I was kind of expecting, like, every time I turn a page, there's going to be another Jewel Riders reference. And when there wasn't there, I wasn't necessarily upset with it. Like, I wasn't, you know, going to stop reading because there wasn't enough Jewel Rider references. And I think that for me, I like it because it stands on its own where as a fan, I can appreciate it because it brings basically new content because also when you're rebooting a story or you're, you know, retelling it, you don't want it a hundred percent the exact same, the way that it was. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that also 
it's just those little hints where I think that you just have to look at it as, yes, it might be inspired by jewel writers, but it truly does kind of live on its own because they're not the same yes. characters. You know, it's two separate things, but yet it very much is inspired by it. Yeah, I mean, you can read the entire series and obviously I never have heard of Jewel Riders, but I think knowing Jewel Riders as we do, it adds an extra layer of interest and sort of fun. And you can have the fun of picking out the little references and, you know, it's like, ooh, there's Ravenswood. Ooh, they mentioned the Misty Moors. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So are you excited to read book two? Of course. I can't Whoa. wait. <laughs> I can't wait to hear all that glitters that looks like Kara's on the cover. So I'm assuming she gets her jewel and her friend. Well, you'll yes, just you have to wait and see. <laughs> I will. I will. But I can't wait. So we're going to have to do this again. Yep. Let's, let's do it in May. How about that? Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds like a fabulous idea. And, you know, for anyone that's listening to this also, I think that the, you do have to realize, um, as Chris was already mentioning, you know, with the Avalon Archive, is that Chris has already been active in this fandom for a while now and, and recapping some of the episodes. So, you know, it was a way to relive Jewel Riders, and that's the whole reason why we love this sister side of Avalon Archive and why we want to invite someone like Jacksworth. Um but I think also the thing to know is that there's like, like I said, there's a whole nother adventure in Avalon Web of Magic. So Jacksworth, aside from like, just like story recaps, like what are some of the things that they can find on Avalon Archive? Well, we have, we have all the illustrations that are in the book. Um, currently working on a, a comparison of the uh, English and French editions, because um, there are quite a few changes between those two. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like name changes, and they also cut out some stuff. Um, say goodbye to those pop culture references. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's understandable. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but some of them are like really ridiculous um, cutouts. Like um, they remove an entire reference to um, Wizard of Oz, unfortunately. Oh no! <laughs> I know. Really? Yeah. That's sad. I thought that that movie was so universal. I, I guess the French don't get it. And there's also one really <laughs> weird thing where they don't translate football quite right. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. So is there, I know that you said that the book series wasn't really released in France until about two years ago, but is there a pretty strong following now in France? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. It's not really like, like there's, there's like, I've, I've tried Googling the uh, French name of the series there and I have, I found like next to nothing other than, hey, the books are on Amazon. <laughs> I see. So it's just kind of like they release them in France, not that there's necessarily like a huge exploding fandom there. Uh, unless you guys are hiding somewhere. <laughs> I don't oh. know. <laughs> I mean, you never know. I mean, you know, it it did take us a little bit of exploring to find our French followers. But I mean, France is actually one of our top followers as far as um, fans go for jewel writers. But that's also because um, Star de Joie Magie was so popular in France. So, you know, when you look at like TV ratings and things like that, supposedly it ranked so high and that's the reason why they have a lot of merchandise. So they have, you know, unique Jewel Rider merchandise that was only released in France. Like we have the sticker book, which I was just doing an audio recording of reading it in French, but is there other merchandise? I mean, if they just released the books, but what about merchandise for this series? Has it only been books or has there ever been anything else? There have been posters and stuffed animals, but you had to either um, go on the... Oh, and there was a t-shirt at some point. And really? There was a, and there was a, a CD that had some of the songs on it, but for <gasps> some of the... Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited to find this now. I have to go searching. I mean, I'm assuming that you've already searched for all this stuff. Yeah, I, I have. I don't know. Um, I think some people managed to get some of this stuff uh, from contests that they had. Um, and the CD you used to be able to get for free from Borders if you bought the fifth book. Mm -hmm. but, Did you get uh, it for free? No, I, I, I found the books long after. Oh. Yeah, but now, I did. I did have borders when the uh, books came out. Her little kid, uh, I think um, she was buying one of the other books and she was singing um, Friend in Me. 
Walla uh-huh. Walla, and I'm like, oh my god, it's so cute. That's adorable. <laughs> See, look at the Jewel Rider children continue. Um, so that's where we get the CD, I mean, the songs from, because I know that there's like an extended version of like some of the Jewel Rider songs. Is that where they come from, that CD release? Yeah. I think like, a, right? A lot of it came from the original Avalon website, right? They, 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 they were, I think, were the original place that hosted some of this Jewel Rider's uh, music. Yeah. Like Friend in Me and um, Feel the Avalon. Magic and Spirit of Avalon. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So, Chris, those were great points that Jacksworth was talking about as far as the serial updates or the updates for the cartoon series. And, of course, a lot of people ask about a reboot for Jewel Riders. Do you kind of see this as an opportunity to kind of have a reboot of Jewel Riders? Like, would you see this as a reboot of Jewel Riders? Or would you, is it still two separate things for you? You know, there. I think they're still separate things to me. But I also feel like if we ever get that Avalon Web of Magic um, animated series, that it's probably the closest thing we're ever going to get to a Jewel Riders reboot, sadly. Unfortunately. But the way that I see it is... By having this reboot of this book series, it opens up the potential opportunity, if their marketing is good enough, and we've seen how Jewel Rider's marketing is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we ever. Right. That it could, though, find new fans and younger people who are watching, you know, whatever platform it's released on. Like, let's say it was released on Netflix, the same way that she kind of blew up and all these right. new fans found it. And the thing is, is that... The new Shira, while it has the basic principle of it, it's very different. And I mean, even when it comes to gender normalities and things like that, and that's really what this generation is latching onto. Oh, so for absolutely. me, when I think, so when I'm thinking about Avalon Web of Magic and the way that it could be rebooted, yes, it's not 100%, you know, jewel writers, but I still think that then if you wove in both stories, and that's the way that I kind of saw it, like not really knowing what the book series was about, when I looked at the concept art and the other um, things that were shown on the um, the Instagram page that Jacksworth was mentioning, for me, it was like, I, I kind of had the same reaction of like, this is not Joel Riders. This is not, this is not my reboot, you know, but it's still, right. it's like now reading the book series, I... I'm really sad that they didn't go forward with it. I know. In some ways, I wonder if the animated series would almost be a reboot of the books. Because I'm sure they would make changes, and I'm sure they wouldn't, you know, adapt it word for word. As any good adaptation, you know, edits and changes and stuff. But it, it, it does hurt my heart a little bit to think that it's probably not happening now. There's... There's been a number of sort of false starts for Avalon Web of Magic. Um, there's some, there was supposed to be a series of, I believe, three books um, set after the original 12 that were going to focus on Adrian. And when was this promised? Um, no, it was supposed to come out several years ago. <laughs> <laughs> like anything else. Sadly. And then that sort of died, and then the series kind of had legs for a little bit and then that seems to have gone away Mm. but you know i would love if the series ever happens or if some other new piece of avalon web of magic material ever happens i would love for them just to acknowledge the jewel writers connection i think it's kind of a missed opportunity to be like hey if you liked this you might also like this other great thing Right, but unfortunately, I think that both fandoms are just so obscure that right. I don't feel like it's a big enough following for them to be like, right. oh, like if you liked this, most people would still be like, did I even know about that? Or did I dream <laughs> of that, that other one? Yeah. What is Jewel Riders? Did I dream that up? I think I did. <laughs> oh, you know, and it's so sad. Another Jewel Riders reference, though, in just the marketing, again, I, I, I don't know. I want to have conversations with them. But when Jacksworth was talking about the CD that you got – from the books when you bought the fifth book, I can't help but remember the, which was essentially like the fifth episode, Song of the Rainbow, when you bought, you know, when you bought a toy, you got that free VHS. It's almost like they're always giving away media when you buy a certain book or a completer or whatever it is. I don't know if that's typical. Like, is that something that usually publishers offer? 
No, I mean book. That's it's very weird for a book publisher to give away a CD. I think. Okay. Um. I, again, I think it's yeah. just it's more reasoning to you know just obviously associate the books with whoever the creative team, whether that's Robert Mandel or, or New Frontier Entertainment or whoever it was that wrote these books. It's almost like the same marketing team is managing, you know, as Jewel Writers was. Right. I mean, obviously, we would love to someday get Robert Mandel or Rachel Roberts, the author of Avalon Web of Magic, uh, to sit down with us and talk a little bit about their creative process and the creation of these two things. And, you know, it would definitely be something I would, would love to ask them is, you know, what what was the genesis of this idea to create this book series that mm-hmm. is based on so many elements of Jewel Riders, but is not Jewel Riders? Right. It's almost like, why didn't you just write a book series, you know, right. on Jewel Writers? Like, just make it a graphic novel, make it a, you know, a serialized version of Jewel Writers. Right. Or tell different Jewel Rider stories set in the past or in the future or, you know, but... Like, what happens after Merlin comes home? I mean, but right. the thing is, is that even with the series itself, how it ended and, you know, basically after the one, well, the one jewel was the end, but before that, you know, mystery Island for at least in North America, it's like that aired. And then all of a sudden this show just got canceled. Like I find that such a funny comparison that, you know, the same thing basically happens to Avalon web of magic. It goes through book 10 and the last two books are not published for like close to a decade. Right, kind of similar to how we didn't find the end series until, you know, just like Jacksworth, we got the videos from Stormy's Avalon website. And something that we didn't mention, but since Stormy's original website, which we were influenced by, was called Avalon, and then later, another similarity, you were inspired by the Avalon Archive to name it the Jewel Writers Archive. Exactly. So it's like... I think it's just funny, you know, one thing inspires something else that then inspires us again in a circle, basically. (laughs) It's this whole creative circle of life, I guess. Circle of friends, maybe? (laughs) Circle of friends, there you go. Yes, to make it Jewel Riders appropriate and not Disney appropriate. Exactly. (laughs) But it is interesting, like I said, I mean, there's just so many similarities, and I think... When I'm talking about this book series, like, while I do just enjoy, you know, the actual story itself, and if you want to read more about the synopsis, follow the links that we're, we've been talking about that were hosted on the Avalon Archive that was the conversation between Chris and Jacksworth back in the day. But I find that talking more about the, at least the assumed whys because we don't know why but you know for us talking like well why did they make it this way or why did they do this i feel that that's more interesting especially from a fan's perspective oh yeah absolutely you know the 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 most fun part sometimes of a reboot of a story that you love is just seeing how they do things differently and you know where where they take familiar elements in new directions as a writer, that's always something that I'm interested in seeing. I know a lot of people hate on reboots for not being the exact thing that they remember as a child. But I think when you step back and you look at something rebooted like like New she it tells a similar story with similar characters, but it is not the exact same story. And I think it's stronger for that because it can tell its own story. Well, but then you got the point of contention where you have a lot of the, I guess you could say, affinity fans of the classic series who were were very grumbly and grumpy about, you know, with many of the changes. And yes, I myself would have loved to have seen Mm -hmm. Barbie She-Ra, you know, but of course, that's just not the way that it happened. But I think, again, you have to look at it from the big picture. And it, the fact is, is especially with friends over at like He-Man.org and their power con that I go to, going there and seeing so many new She-Ra fans Without that new series, they wouldn't have been there. There wouldn't have been that mix of of young people and, you know, families and things like that. It basically only would have been older generation people going in, remembering and reminiscing from their childhood. Right. And it becomes the old folks' home. Exactly. Sad (laughs) to say. Shady Pines, Etheria. Great. (laughs) So 
Is Jewel Rider's Shady Pines Avalon? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the new Avalon would have been the new one. Exactly. Oh, well. Well, we'll just have to wait and see what happens then in the future. No, we, uh, the, the point of a reboot, I think, in the modern era is to bring new fans to a property. Because if you don't bring new fans to a property, how does it survive and how does it continue to grow and and be be relevant to children and and new viewers today? Mm-hmm. So Again, which you've already seen. That's my soapbox life. about reboots. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. Well, this was really insightful, and I enjoyed talking about the first book. So, circles in the stream, and I can't wait for all that glitters. Yeah. That'll be fun. And, mm -hmm, you know, and I really am interested now in all that merchandise that Jack oh, Swift was mentioning to Avalon Level Magic. I plush so bad now. And a lot of people ask about that. I mean, I know that there's been some fans that have made plush Jewel Rider things. Like, mm -hmm. we've seen some of the plush, like, kits. I know the Prism Fox was really cute that someone made. I think that someone also made a plush shadow song as well. Say, I know you published this adorable picture of a plush shadow song not too long ago. Mm hmm Yeah. I was like, so, how do I get one? <laughs> there's so many creative people out there. I love it. And that's the thing that I love about the fandom is that especially with series like these that didn't really have the strong marketing team, I guess you could mm -hmm. say, behind it, like like something like a Disney or DreamWorks, like She-Ra, where they have a lot of products that you can go out, you can buy, and you can create, is that with a product like Jewel Riders or Avalon of Magic, if you wanted to create merchandise, it's almost like you had to create it yourself, which a part of me is kind of frustrated because it's like, ugh, I wish Princess Guinevere and the Jewel Riders had, you know, clothing, or they had things like that. Like, that would have been amazing. But then the other part of me is like, with but if we had been given all that stuff, we wouldn't have made the wooden jewels or the wooden crystal carriage or all the other things that we made oh, yeah. to make up for that lack of memorabilia. Yeah, it's like, I mean, I remember I had a set of, I I drew the jewels on paper and then pasted them onto cardboard. Mm -hmm. you know, not quite as fancy as your homemade as my wooden jewels. Wooden jewels. But, they, <laughs> but you know what? It was, it stood in. It was your jewel. For, for playtime, and they had glitter and all of that fun stuff. Yes, yeah, such memories. What would you have created if you were, well, I was going to say if you were a child, but I guess it doesn't really matter if you're a child or not. But, like, from Avalon Web and Magic, what was the iconic toy that you would have wanted from this? Ooh, from Avalon Web of Magic. I probably would have loved a plush Stormbringer. Okay. The Mist Wolf. Yeah, so you want a plush wolf. Yeah, I think that I think that would have been fun. Or maybe a plush Ozzy. I think he could be really cute. Okay. Okay. The thing that but I immediately go about plush. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. But the thing that I immediately went to is dolls. I want oh, like of course. you know like but I want like fashion doll like Barbie sized dolls of the girls that's what I want because like I just look at all their clothes and it's like I would have loved to have had you know the same outfits like the very I guess like emo for Adrian and the very yeah. kind of like preppy looking for Emily but then honestly I probably would have loved more of Kara's outfit Kara the best if exactly they because had she's made dolls drenched in pink and it's basically Barbie exactly. so that's why I would have loved that but yeah I mean it's interesting to think about that it's like what would you have wanted because for jewel writers like yeah there's I think but also because it's a fantasy world that you're actually visibly like visually seen someone has already created that character or has created that thing for you to look at and then you want to translate it to a thing whereas in a book you are envisioning Mm -hmm. what that item looks like so for you and for someone else it might be very different you know like if you made it and then like someone's like well that's not the storm that i envisioned like that's not what i thought you know they right. looked like so which i thought it was actually kind of a brilliant stroke that they have so many illustrations in the new editions because it really it really goes a long way to make sure everyone sees these characters the same way well that's essential but that's essential for 
like a style guide if you're mm-hmm. making merchandise. But again, if you're not even doing anything with those characters, like you're not, you know, releasing anything that has the images on it. It's like who, you know, it's not really doing anything to me. I know I mean, they they made all this beautiful art and then did nothing else with it. Right. Yeah. But, you know, I've never really thought about that. It's like without like, let's say even just like young adult reading, I mean, you could say adult reading, without an image of the character on the cover, if there's no pictures within the book, it's almost like, you know, person A and person B are envisioning totally different characters. Well, that's the magic of reading. That's... I suppose so. But again, always looking at it from the lens of marketing, it's like, that's a terrible marketing strategy. Yes, but what you're doing is you're giving everyone the opportunity to see it in a way that fits best in their own mind. Mm, I suppose so. Well, we didn't get the dolls and we didn't get the plush, so I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> well, but we got some beautiful illustrations out of it. Yeah, they are funny illustrations. I like them. They're very fun. Can you think of anything else? Anything else that I would have wanted? No, no, just anything else that you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Think of something else. Your plush wasn't enough. How much <laughs> must I want? <laughs> you wanted the Panini sticker book. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> you also wanted the, the the color forms. Oh, my gosh. Color the, forms. The 3D color forms, which I was very confused at even what this purpose was why would <laughs> i want wanna, this you know don't you want to color them where the color doesn't stick <laughs> exactly oh it's so oh, awful material i know oh it was so funny water okay so jacksworth again if people are interested in learning more about avalon web of magic or going to the archive um is there any specific updates or pages that they should visit um, for any specific updates, um, honestly, just go to the main page. I'll probably have something put, put up there whenever something comes out. Or if you want to look at previous updates on the animated series, just look up animated series production updates and you'll find them there. And if you want recaps, there's a handy drop down menu so you can look at them. And yeah, your so web address is? Um, it's avalonarchive.wordpress.com. Okay, avalonarchive.wordpress.com. Yeah, tons, tons of great information. I always enjoyed reading the chapter-by-chapter chapter recaps after I finished each book. Yay. So I hope people enjoy those, too, because they're great fun to read, and you find all sorts of things and connections that I would have never found. Right. It's a fun read, and we can't wait for book two. So, again, we'll be recapping this in May, and then we'll be reading the third book and we'll be recapping that in july Mm -hmm. yes okay sounds good well thanks so much jacksworth for coming on we really appreciate it all right no problem yeah great (laughs) to have you thank you all right well we can't thank jacksworth enough for coming on and chatting with us about avalon web of magic if you want to find out more visit avalonarchive.wordpress.com Or you can visit us at jewelridersarchive.com. And we hope you join us again in May and then July for our next read-throughs of the Avalon Web of Magic. We'll be doing All That Glitters next May. Can't wait. Yeah, so stay tuned. And as we always like to say, friends together. Friends Friends forever. forever. You're tuned into the Jewel Riders Archive.